The mindset that you need to have to really be successful with your music marketing is probably the most important thing that you're going to need. So let's jump into it and talk about it. My name is Lazy the Gifted. I feel like I have some expertise to offer you and I wanna offer that for free here on this channel. So if you get any value from it, you know what to, you know what to do. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, obviously all that good stuff. I wanna today just talk about the music marketing mindset that you're gonna to need to be successful. So first off, mindset in general is obviously super important, you know that. Um, the mindset is really what you need to really get started. So things like a lot of the problems that we have as artists, I know I used to have these problems like limiting beliefs. Like why would anyone want to hear my music? Um, my music's not ready yet. It's not good enough. It's not as good as the big artists out there. So I totally understand that. And this is one thing that I realized through like a lot of the different trial and errors that I've gone through. This whole idea of like being the best is pretty arbitrary because it's so subjective. Like music itself is super subjective. And so don't worry about feeling like you're the best. Make sure that your music is of high quality that you feel like is really good and then you're gonna be able to put it out. So that's the first thing we need to do is just break those limiting beliefs that you have. Come to terms with those limiting beliefs and understand, look, those limiting beliefs and those thoughts are not true. They're not fact. They're just in our own head. Right? So like that's obviously the first thing you gotta do is figure those things out, right? And maybe I'll do a whole video on just talking about limiting beliefs. Today I wanna talk more about combining mindset with tactical strategy because I feel like a lot of the times content like this one is made and it's really separate. Like they talk all about mindset and motivation and inspiring you and kind of kicking you in the butt. And then there's like the tactical stuff that will also inspire you but in a way that's gonna make you wanna take some action, like do this actual specific task. So today I kind of want to combine both of those things in a way and sort of meet halfway because you're not going to go do the tasks. You're not going to go do the tactical things. You're not going to invest the money into the paid ads. You're not going to get in the studio if your mindset isn't right. And at the same time, once your mindset is right, you're going to want to know what to do and what tactical things to actually get after. So we're going to kind of combine them a little bit. So thinking of it like this, the first thing when it comes to music marketing, the biggest thing that I notice a lot of artists don't really treat themselves like a business, which I understand why. It's super difficult. Running a business is very can feel very transactional and it can feel very just money, just about money. It's like I'm giving you this thing for value, you're giving me money in return, I'm gonna get you this result. With music, it can be a little bit weird. It can be kind of a blurred line of like, well, what is the exact value I'm giving somebody? I'm not helping them grow their Instagram or I'm not helping them help their car run better or I'm not, you know, just like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like services, but it's not a clear cut value exchange right away. That's where you got to do some deep thinking and understanding of yourself. And you got to understand what is it that I'm bringing to the table as a musician, as an artist with my music. So for me, it's crazy. Somebody asked me this today, like, what kind of music do you make? And it was a new artist who I haven't ever talked to and today it was the first time I ever got to speak with them. And at first I just said, oh yeah, like I'm a rapper. But then I like quickly realized, I was like, hold up bro, you're not just a rapper. Remember, if you're just a rapper, now he just thinks, okay, it's just another rapper. But I was like, I'm a rapper. I would say the lane, and I'm glad I quick thought this. Um, I was like, I'm a rapper and, and the lane that I would say I'm in and the type of music that I make is really entrepreneurial hip hop because that's the story that I'm telling. Then he was like, oh, that's cool. And he really had that exact reaction because my mindset was that I have a different value that I'm bringing to the table that Drake is maybe not bringing or that J. Cole or Kendrick is not bringing, right? Like, I'm not saying that I'm better than them or that they're even better than me. It's not, that's not what it's about. What it's about is what's every single person bringing to the table. So another music marketing mindset to understand is that you are not the only artist that your fans are going to listen to. And that's a good thing because I think a lot of the time for me, I got really caught up in the beginning of my career. Okay, I gotta be as good as so and so. Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick, Big Sean, those were the people I was looking at when I was growing up, right? So. I realized, I was like, I might not ever have that rapping ability, Drake with that sing, singing ability and songwriting ability. Who knows, I might not ever get to that level. But I realized, I listen to all of those dudes. I listen to Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick. I even listen to dudes who might not be considered as good as them. 
You know what I mean? Like I know I'm not going to name those artists. I'm just saying to popular what, what the market would say. Oh, this person's not as good as Drake. Like Drake is one of the biggest in the world. If not, he's kind of like you argue he's like one of the what top three, top five biggest artists in the entire world, right? And, and Kanye West, of course, as well. And and so it, it's it's funny because when you realize that like you don't just listen to one artist, right? So then why would you expect your fans just to listen to you? So that's the point. You just need to bring something different to the table that maybe other artists aren't bringing. You don't need to go way off the deep end and bring some brand new genre that no one's ever heard before. That's going to be too much. But you can be just being yourself is going to bring people value in a way. And the other thing too, in terms of music marketing mindset and differentiating yourself, the way that you approach your marketing can also be different. There's a guy um, on TikTok who's super big named Nick D. And, you know, it's not like we've, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a white rapper. He he's, can sing, he can rap, he's super dope. And he does these really f- cool videos where he raps in the back of his van. And he has like his whole recording set up on a laptop in his van and he's holding his microphone. Now, the style of music that he makes, it's not like we've never heard it before, right? It's not like he's coming with this brand new innovative genre, okay? And you would argue he might, he's probably not even as good a rapper as Eminem or these other big guys, right? But that has nothing to do with anything. It doesn't matter. The dope thing about him is, okay, I don't think I've seen a dude rap in the back of his van before, right? Right? That's where he gets you. And by the way, his music's super dope. He's a really good rapper, good good singer. His voice is good. He's dope. He's dope. He's grown over a million followers on TikTok, and you can look at him and be like, okay, so it's not just like the music, because the music's sick. So I'm not saying the music ain't sick. The music is sick. But he wasn't thinking, okay, I need to be better than. Maybe he was. I don't know, dude, personally. But I'm looking at him being like, this dude tried something different with his marketing. He tried doing these short, quick videos in the back of his van. So when it comes to marketing your music, don't worry about your music sounding so different. I mean, you want it to be different, but you want it to be more organic to you. And think about the marketing. Think about what can you do with the marketing that will be different, that will be better. Another band or artist or group that I listen to is Some Kid Punk. And they they post these really dope Instagram reels where you literally like... There, it's them performing, like it's their face pretty close to the microphone and it's, it's them rapping and the way the music sounds is amazing, it's super dope. It's, it, I, would, I don't even know what genre to call it, see that's the thing. It sounds like punk, it sounds like rap, it sounds like EDM almost, I don't even know. It's all those elements combined, but the way they're marketing it is super dope. They're releasing a, song, a new song every two weeks, they're doing these Instagram reel videos where they're super close to the mic, which aren't like super unique videos, but they work. They work, they get the job done, the music sounds great. So when it comes to music marketing mindset, make your mindset more about, don't make it, don't, don't, don't put attention to the limiting beliefs that you have because those are false. Put your attention more toward, okay, what can I do? Okay? The other music marketing mindset thing that I want to discuss is, is actually the thinking aspect of it. Overthinking is usually the plague of most artists. You might be in that as, you might, that might be your issue right now. And if it ain't your issue, I know you know an artist where their issue is they overthink things, right? I'll give you an example, okay? Um, so, like literally a couple months ago, I was doing this, I was experimenting with this type of video called Peaceful Leaders Podcasts. Okay, I'm not doing them anymore. I'm focusing more on this. And it was trying to be personal development entrepreneurship stuff, okay? I think I did like four or five, six episodes. It wasn't a lot. But what I was doing was, was chopping up little snippets of it, posting it on Instagram, so one of my actually really good friends reached out to me. We were in a group chat already talking about some stuff. And he was like, hey, like, I want, you know, and, and this is how it is. With me and my friends, our relationship is like we call each other out on stuff that we don't think we're doing good. So the, so it was uncalled for when he reached out to me and said, hey, um, basically what he was talking about was that my videos are very out of context. Like, I'll watch your videos, bro, and sometimes they make no sense and I don't understand what, what you're even talking about. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I almost didn't, I just kind of didn't care because I was like, well, I put out like five videos a week. So, like, if one of them is like that, like, I don't give a shit, like, whatever. And I was like, just kind of telling him, I'm like, well, he, basically the way he was phrasing it was, 
I don't understand the context and the thesis of this video. And I'm like, I was kind of being maybe a douchebag. I didn't mean to be a douchebag, but I kind of, I guess, was on inadvertently. But I was like, well, I, I've already graduated college, so I don't give a shit about thesis anymore. Like, I don't care. I'm just posting videos. And then he was like, well, something, something about this is going to make, make me want to unfollow you. I'm like, well, then you can just unfollow me. I don't really care. And like, who was right, who was wrong, I don't, it doesn't fucking matter who was right and wrong. He was right and he was wrong. I was right, but I was also wrong. It don't matter. The idea is like the difference in mindsets. Again, I'm not saying my mindset's right and his is wrong, but I'm just sharing with you. My mindset is like, well, I'm releasing five videos a week, so I don't care if one of them flops like that or if you, it didn't even flop. I'm just saying, if, if you feel like one of the videos don't work, like at the worst case, at the least, you saw my face, watched it, you're like, that doesn't make sense, I don't get his thesis, I don't like it. Cool, guess what? Tomorrow I'm bringing you another video. And likely if you're like, how likely is it that someone watches one of my videos, thinks that there's no thesis, doesn't like it, and then the next day decides that they're not just, I'm just done watching his videos, I'm gonna keep following him, but I'm not gonna watch any more of his videos. Probably not likely. It's just like you have to go through so many things. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the idea that you shouldn't need to overthink. Like, I'm not overthinking my, my, my content. I'm like, honestly, like, and again, I'm not the most successful ever, and I'm not even close to where I want to be, but I've reached, like, a pretty good amount of success in terms of, like, how much content I've put out, the amount of followers I've gained, the emails list that I've gone, you know, the things that I've just been able to do off sheer hustle has happened because I don't overthink things. I'll give you an example. I did a podcast episode every single day for 366 days. And that's not going to be the last time I mentioned that. I'm going to bring that up a lot. It was called the Music Mastery Podcast. I'm pissed because really I should be doing that now because now I'm doing this coaching thing even more. I should go back to that, but that shit is too overwhelming for me to do right now. But I did a new episode every single day for a year. Bruh, do you really think I put a lot of thought into every episode? Hell no. I could not. Like, you can't. And do you think, and you're probably thinking, oh, well, did you batch your content? Did you record seven episodes on a Sunday and upload? No, I recorded damn near every day. Sometimes I pulled out my fucking phone, recorded voice notes, recorded it with my AirPods, took that audio, put it on my computer, did a little bit of EQing and compression, and that's what I uploaded to iTunes. So, like, I did not overthink it. What did I get out of it? I ended up getting a paid client for that, $500. A guy literally was like, it was like 160 episodes deep. He hit me up and was like, it was somebody I kind of had known before, but not really. And he was like, bro, I have been listening to your podcast every day for like a month. Like at 8 a.m., I take the bus and I go to work and I literally have a regimen of when I listen to your podcast because I know that you put out a new episode every single day. So I literally listen to your podcast every day. He's like, I don't even know what results you have. I don't know where you're at. All I know is I like what you're doing and I want to work with you. I want to pay you. Do you do coaching? At the time, I was like, yep, I do coaching and I didn't do any coaching. But I was like, yeah, I do. And then like I ended up pitching him and closing him for $500. We had a great working relationship, built a great friendship off it. The point is like that was from putting out content off sheer hustle. I didn't even like reach out to that dude. It was crazy. And because my mindset was just like put it out, put it out, put it out, put it out, put it out. You know what I'm saying? Um, the other thing too, when it comes to the idea of like just putting shit out, okay, let's talk now about songs. Uh, let me even finish with the Music Mastery Podcast. My bad, I'm going crazy right now. But with the Music Mastery Podcast, I ended up interviewing people who were big. I interviewed Gabe Schillinger from Legion Beats, who was, I was in his program at the time, so we already kind of had ch chopped it up. But it didn't matter. I didn't even ask him to come on, actually, now that I think of it. I was in his Facebook group. I don't even know. I made some posts in the group, and he commented and was like, can I be on your podcast? I was like, what the fuck? Yes. You're Legion Beats. Of course you can be on my podcast. He asked to be on my podcast, bro, because of the amount of output. This is a dude who already had built two seven-figure businesses off music, and he asked to be on my podcast because I was just putting hella shit out. Crazy. So I had interviewed him. I interviewed Adam Ivey. I was in his paid program too. He came on. I interviewed how to rap Drew off a cold DM. I interviewed Corey, Corey Davis from um, 
from Contra Brand Agency. Like I interviewed, I interviewed someone named Peyton Lamar who was on the fucking Voice. He was on TV, bruh. I'm sure I'm forgetting people that are super. I mean, everybody I interviewed was super dope, but like I interviewed so many people that had done so much great shit. And I was like, dog, the reason I was able to even get to that point was because I put out so much, so much. A new episode every day with music. When I started producing music was like May 27, uh, like, yeah, like May 2017, I graduated college. So it was like June 2017. I was like, all right, I'm going to start producing music. I worked on music every day. And then in 2018, I want to say, I think that it was 2018. I did a song every two weeks for months. Like I put out, holy shit. Dude, in 2018, I don't remember how many songs I put out. I, I cannot, I could not remember that, but like maybe it was 10. 2019, or, yeah, in 2019, I think I put out like 18 songs or something. Pretty good. And then... No, nah, I mean, honestly, bro, I might have even put out more, but, like, that's just a good rough number. Put out a lot, a lot of music. And what did it do for me? Listen, at the time, my listenership, it wasn't that my listenership was growing. It was that I was getting better because I was forcing myself to put out hella music. It put the pressure on me to continue to improve as a musician, rapper, singer, songwriter, piano player, beat maker, mixer, master, overall producer. It forced me to get better because of the amount of stuff that I was putting out because my mindset was don't fucking think, just put it out. And like, it worked. It fucking worked. Then when I started making my own business as a music producer, I was able to gain an email list of 10,000 people because I said, fuck it, put it out. Make an advertisement, film it on your goddamn phone, put that on Facebook, run ads, did it work? Nope, all right, do it again, do it again, do it again, till about the sixth video. On like the sixth video, I hit, and it was the 10th funnel. I had put out like 10 different funnels, like put out a funnel, put out an ad, does this shit work? Nope, next one, next one, next one, next one, till I hit 10, 10 funnels. On the 10th funnel, Broke even, I spent a thousand bucks in a month and I made a thousand bucks revenue in 30 days. Is that the dopest shit in the world? Hell no. Is that plaque, seven figures, blah, 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 listeners on Spotify? No. But the point was I had reached a level of art. All right, I got 10 people, 10,000 people on my email list. I finally broke even on ad spend all on my own off just, again, pure hustle and the mindset of just put that shit out. It's the same mindset with music, Posts on Instagram, stories, TikToks, funnels slash websites, emails that you send your list, advertisements you choose to try. It's just the mindset of don't think, just fucking put that shit out. Like that, like that right there is going to get you the winning mindset right there. And it will translate to everything, but it will translate so much to the way you market yourself. Because as you know, you can't win unless you put hella shit out. You know that. Like I'm not gonna sit here and be like, they talk to you about that shit like like it's revolutionary it's not everybody knows that you have to put out tons of shit the only reason people don't put out tons of shit is because of your fucking mindset that's literally the reason you're not putting out hella content or maybe you're like being really deliberate and you're planning some shit i don't know that's why i'm i'm filming all these youtube videos i'm trying to stack them up so i can go once a week but chop every snip and put out ig content five six seven days a week because i know what it takes I know what it takes. You gotta put shit out. So yeah, man, get your fucking mind right. If you, if you dude, go freaking meditate, go running, go lift weights, go on a fucking hike, go spend time with people you love, take a break from music. I don't give a shit what you do. Just figure out a way to wrap your head around the fact that you need to put out hella content. And if you're not putting out hella content, that should be your number one priority. How do I put out hella content? It can be YouTube. It can be music. Music's hard, but hey, how am I going to put out a song a month? Don't matter how much money you got to promote it. Don't matter if you're doing a music video. Doesn't matter if you have a marketing plan. Get to the point where you're putting hella shit out. Let me say another thing too, by the way, and this will be like the last thing I end on. At the point I'm at right this second that I'm filming this video, what's the fucking date today? I don't even know the date. The date is like, okay. 
June 27th, 2022 is the day I'm filming this video. All right. I'm in a really beautiful, I like to call it a middle period. I'm 11 years, I'm about to be like, I'm 10 and a half years deep in making music, about to be 11, right? Um, no, uh, uh, no, it has been 11 years, 11 years deep in making music, okay? I got a lot of reps. I haven't built a giant fan base yet. Hold on. When I say good middle period, here's why. Because right this second, I'm doing some shit that's going to pop me off in the next 12 to 18 months. Pop me off as in make me a living as a musician. What it is is because I'm running paid ads. I have other videos and other stuff I'm putting out to kind of show you about paid ads. But but the idea is like, let me, let me, let me tell you why this mindset of like, put out hella shit, how does that translate? Because a lot of people have asked me this, listen, because my... Right this second, if you go look on Spotify at my monthly listeners, you're going to think I'm a fucking fraud because I, I don't even have a hundred monthly listeners on Spotify. I'm being honest. I don't care because I'm growing that shit right now. I'm running paid ads. I'm growing it. It's going to get bigger. I'm not even tripping. But like if you go look, you're going to be like, how does this translate? How does this translate? Here's how it translates. So when I first started running paid ads back in 2018, I, I, I was running the ads to like music videos, just trying to get people to watch the video, okay? Obviously, I didn't, I didn't really know much about ads. The campaigns didn't go so well. But I had to go through like, I want to say five music videos, five different music videos. I'm, no, yes, I think this is right. I don't remember the exact, but it's like five music videos. On the sixth music video, I put out a video called Doing the Most. It was a lyric visualizer video. It did really well with paid ads. I would say it was about a seven out of 10 campaign, as in like, I would say the results were resulting in about, I'd give them a seven out of 10. Everything else was like a five out of 10 or a four out of 10. It was about a seven out of 10, seven and a half out of 10, doing well. The next music video though, the seventh, which is the one I'm still running, Watch Me, if you guys wanna go on my YouTube channel, check out Watch Me, it's got over 100,000 views here on YouTube. It's doing, it's killing on Facebook right now. Killing. Results are 10 out of 10. I look at the results as that, of that campaign as A+. Plus. Why? The same thing I'm talking about right now. Put it out. Get the reps. Go. I put out so much music, so much content, so many songs, videos, ad campaigns, funnels, emails, fucking you name it, with no idea what I was doing, no plan, no money behind anything. And you look at me and you'd be like, well, wait, your results don't mean anything. Like, look at your Spotify monthly listeners. Right now, in the music industry, Spotify monthly listeners is probably the most legitimate stat to show if you know what the fuck you're doing with music or not. If you look at mine right now, you'd think I didn't know, but here's the deal. That's why I told you I'm in this beautiful middle period. Because I'm running paid ads right this second on my Spotify. Here's what you don't understand. It looks like shit right now, but a month ago, it looked even worse, and today it's it's going like this. It's like that. And then once, it, and then pretty soon it's going to go like this. I'm telling you because it's inevitable because I'm, I'm doing, I know what I'm doing with paid ads. I know what I'm doing with paid ads. I've gotten the reps and I know my music's good enough because I put out hella music. I'm growing my brand. I'm getting my finances right so I can put more money into the ads all because of my mindset of put shit out. Force yourself to get on a schedule, force yourself to put out a certain type of content at a certain schedule for at least a year just to see what happens. Hey, I'm going to put out a song a month for a year. Perfect. I love that. Hey, I'm going to go on TikTok once a day for a year. Love that. Cool. Hey, I'm posting on Instagram once a day for a year. Awesome. Yo, I'm going to tweet six to seven times a day and I'm going to reach out to one human on Twitter every day for a year. Love that. You'll definitely grow if you do that, right? Like, I'm just spitballing ideas all off the mindset of like just do some shit and post it every day. And like the other thing too is being afraid to be burnt out. Trust me. Let me tell you something. Burnout. My mom's a public speaker and she, her whole thing is banish burnout. I love what she talks about. It's important to banish burnout. But I will say this. Burnout is not the end of the world. Burnout's not the worst thing in the world. You know what the worst thing in the world is? For me, I've gone through like really extreme burnout. But you know what else I've gone through? Extreme boredom. And guess what? I'd put burnout over boredom. I'd rather be burnt out than bored. 
Bored is the worst feeling because bored makes you feel like you have nothing going on in your life, you're purposeless, you don't know what's gonna happen in your future, it causes anxiety. Burnout is like, God, I hate everything, I'm miserable, I'm, I'm working so hard and I'm not getting anywhere. But you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't make you feel like shit about your future. When you're burnt out, you're looking at yourself and eventually you'll have a come to God moment, you'll be like, you know what? This is one of those times that God's telling me I'm doing something right. That's what happens when you get burnt out. Once you realize that, once you take some time, away from the thing that's burning you out, you will go and be successful. So I'd rather be burnt out. Trust me, if you're trying to find this whole balance, go for the burnout, because you'll get more results off the shit that you did from the burnout. And for people who go, well, it doesn't have long lasting results, that's bullshit, because all you have to do is take a break and get right back to it. If you want to find something sustainable, do something sustainable, but keep it regular. That's one of our, my biggest issues I see with musicians. Y'all, we don't do shit on a regular fucking basis. We just like do some shit and we're like, that was cool. And then what? Nothing. Dude, literally force yourself. I'm going to get, don't, don't start thinking I'm going to get burnt out. I don't want to do it. I know I don't want to post on social media. So I just would rather not do it at all. That's so fucking stupid. How are you going to put a roof over your head with music? If you have that kind of attitude, you literally won't. You're going to fucking fail. So, so much better. Rather than have that attitude, have the attitude of put some shit out. Get your reps up, all right? At this point, I feel like I beat a dead horse, okay? Like I really repeated myself a lot, but it was important, okay? Listen, if you're in a place right now where you're like super stuck, or if you're in a place right now where you're feeling like you're getting some stuff going, but you need some more stuff going in your career, if you wanna increase your Spotify monthly listeners, which I'm doing successfully right now with paid ads, just started running some shit 30 days ago. If you need to gain more fans, guaranteed, Guaranteed as in I know for a fact I am going to get fans and you need like a good system that will get you there I can help you. Okay. All you have to do is click below and book a call with me. Okay. It's a free call It's totally free just for me to get to know you and see what's going on in your music career to see if I can help you out Okay, I would love to chat with you and I would love to see if there's anything else I can do to help you get closer to your goals all right. Also, of course, like, subscribe to the channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to check out my music, I'll put it in the description as well. All right. Thank you so much for listening and uh, appreciate you. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace.